أنا العبد الذي كسب الذنوب وصدته الأماني أن يتوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونسلي على رسوله الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our nourisher, our sustainer, our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has sent us as from the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Almighty Allah ta'ala in the Quran very clearly has explained the stages of the development of the fetus in the human body Almighty Allah ta'ala has made it so important for a people to realize this institution of nikah and this institution of marriage today in the presence of so many respected ulama in the presence of the great allama khalid mahmud and those that are the respectable ulama here it's very difficult to go into such the topic in the presence of great ulama but allah ta'ala make it easy for me given that in the time that has been allocated to bring to you some of the challenges that our youth are facing. Imam Mumtaz has highlighted the issue of understanding the great scholars and imma, imams of uh, fiqh and uh, having a good understanding on why we do follow a madhab, why we do hold on to such important great giant and scholars in the deen. One is in today's time and day and age, every day that is passing by, there is an increase in the number of fitan. Number of fitan and fitan that are increasing so much so that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is reported to have said, a person in the morning he will have iman and in the evening he would lose his iman. Badiru bil a'mali fitanan muslim. The fitan will be like the portions and the darkness in the night. So dark and the portion that covers upon another portion. So much of fitan there will be. Do you know that on the 5th of February in January or in January itself, this gay marriages was introduced. And then in the 5th of February, many of the MPs, we are speaking about eight Muslim MPs that we have in parliament. From amongst them, five of the MPs voted for gay marriages two abstained and one voted against it the one that voted against it Rahman Chisti so we need to salute him and for those MPs of Muslim faith who say and they claim that they are sympathizers of the deen for example have sent a very strong damaging message the youth of today are going to face so much of challenges. It's going to have an impact on their education, on their understanding. When a child is growing up, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa whom we have been commanded to emulate and to follow his teachings and his sunnah. We cannot be true and just in our claim of, of love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa until the love we have for him is more than the love we have for our father and for our son and for all of the people. Impact of education on the children can you imagine if it is going to become legal if this bill is going to be passed in parliament we were in the houses of parliament and there was the issue of the halal and haram that was discussed but one thing that we need to understand in parliament there are legislation that have been passed how is it been passed do we understand the mechanism of what happens when people are sitting around a table and they are deciding on matters of deen which is going to affect our ibadah, our worshipping Almighty Allah Ta'ala. Tomorrow a time may come 
and we fear the worst given that there are so much of calamities that are coming upon the ummah there are so much of disasters natural disasters that are coming upon the ummah one is natural disasters and the other is man made disasters one is what are the reasons why almighty allah ta'ala may send down his azab and his calamity and his wrath may descend upon a people we have to look at the stories of the prophets allah ta'ala sent lut alayhi salam to his people and the people they indulge in such sinful practice then one of the reasons why allah ta'ala send down his punishment ma sabaqakum biha min ahadi min al alamin innakum la ta'tuna rijala shahwatan min dun an nisa bal antum qaumun musrifun if we say and we understand that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the final messenger and he came to show us a complete way of life if you adopt his way his teaching his sunnah then we are following a path that we will attain eternal success in the life of the hereafter but the moment we abandon his teachings the moment we violate the commandment of allah the moment we blatantly ignore the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then we are inviting the azab of allah ta'ala to come upon us ma asabakum min musiba fa bima kasabat aydikum zahara al fasad fi al barri wal fi al barri wal bahri bima kasabat aydi an nas liyziqahum ba'd al ladhi amilu la'allahum yarji'un and when almighty allah ta'ala sends down his azab sends down his punishment and then when that calamity comes they will be from amongst the people who may take lesson and they may rectify their ways fa'tabiru ya ulil absar on my recent journey to a masjid al aqsa and visiting and seeing the i mean the dead sea people have turned it into a holiday resort this is where the azab of allah ta'ala came down and in today if you remember a few years back there were floods happening in parts of uk few years back we remember there was hurricanes and there were tornadoes and also in recent times we noticed the change in the climatical conditions in the uk we have to question ourselves it is not far fetched that allah ta'ala may send down his punishment upon the people in today's time because there has never been a time that there is so much lobbying and so much effort been put so that people may start normalizing that which is totally unnatural but allah ta'ala has created adam he has created hawa we say adam and eve if we change the natural order of allah ataatuna dhukrana min al alamin are you coming to those who are the males of the people ma sabaqakum biha min ahad min al alamin if no people before lut alayhi salam had indulged in such a practice and in today it has been promoted so from the challenges that the young and the youth may face if it becomes introduced or it becomes a bill that is passed in parliament it will be aggressively promoted in the schools and your child may start reading books and what type of books will they read king and king mom and mom getting married mother will not even know where is parental responsibility we already see that there is what has happened to the fabric of the society there are probably over 2.6 million parents single mothers single parents children are growing up in such type of homes the society already is suffering and what will happen if this becomes you see the whole issue here is about the redefining of the marriage we want you and we want all of the people to remember that here in derby uh, you have to check because this is the time because very soon we'll enter into may this is going to be introduced into parliament again marriage this is a special that has come is called pro life times and the title says same sex marriage will sh- will uh, uh, have shocking impact on schools there is a list of all of the mps that have voted throughout the con- country there in south london we have the list of the mps and we have already prepared letter that will be sending to, to them it must reach them by probably next week why what you are asking them simply you are saying that the first reading has gone and please uh, it says here on uh, out of 400 to 175 in support of legalizing same sex marriage we want you to look for the name of your mp and send another letter to him to oppose this bill it's going to be again voted in parliament in the month of may in previously many of the mps were saying 
we have not received any complaints. We are worried and we are concerned. If this becomes and if it is voted again, it is going to go to the House of Lords. And when it goes to the House of Lords, there will be a report stage. There will be a committee stage. And then again, after the decision that has been made in the House of Lords, it will come back to decision. And if a bill has been passed, it may become legalized in 2015. The call that you are making from the youth of today, that Allah Ta'ala has given you the opportunity to do some effort in the, in, for the sake and for the pleasure of Allah, you are coming to such type of gatherings, you are listening to the importance and holding to the deen and holding on to the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But part of our holding on to the deen is that we need to be informed, not to remain marginalized, not to remain on the side, but to do such type of action that will be pleasing to Almighty Allah Ta'ala. Do not belittle any action. I want to bring this very clearly to you. If your MP voted against the government's marriage bill, please write to them immediately to thank them for voting to protect marriage between a man and a woman as the fundamental group unit of society. If your MP abstained, write to him and to encourage her to vote against the government's bill at the third reading. There is one more reading left in the House of Commons. So the youth of today have so many challenges. Muslim. Yes, indeed. The Ahmadiyya and the Qadiani, and that is a very great serious issue because it is concerning our aqidah and concerning our Iman. We have to defend the finality of the Prophet. There's no doubt and there's no I mean we should not have any doubt that you cannot remain silent. If they have chosen your identity, we've seen uh, in many places they use certain type of uh, uh, documents and so certain type of letters and they are already promoting it. You probably have seen it here. We find this in hospitals. We find it in different places outside the streets. They, they distribute their, their works and look at the quality they use. True love of the Holy Prophet So I am asking you, what does true love dictate? Yeah, you are speaking about loyalty, freedom, equality, respect and peace. Can you show me and can you inform me in the name of equality has any of the Ahmadiyya community, the Qadiani, have they opposed this gay marriage bill? Because what it is, when you are speaking about equality, what does equality mean? Does equality mean that we violate the commandment of Allah, the natural order of Allah, when people are fulfilling their base carnal desires, they are following their shahwat, zuyyina linnas hubbu shahwat, instead of trying to reinforce marriage as a great religious institution for the betterment of the community, the society at large, what is happening? There are people out there who are doing things in the name of freedom, equality, respect, peace. How can, how can you attain, how can you say it is on equality? If a child is growing up in a home, see what the psychologists say. See those who have researched and investigated those children. Because why we cannot stop there? You cannot stop with the topic on this discussion because one thing would lead to another. There will be children who will be sent for adoption. There will be the issue on fostering. They will take their child, even if the child is from a Muslim home. Kullu mawludin yuladu ala al-fitra. Every child is born on the fitra. Fa'abawahu yahuwidanihi aw yunassiranihi aw yumajjisanihi. So his parents may turn him into a Jew or a Christian or a Magian. According to the upbringing of the child, if the gay marriages become legal, meaning if they redefine marriage, that it is allowed for a man to get married to a man because they love each another, so we want to defend their rights. It's not, they're saying that this is equality and human rights. We have forgotten about the most weak and vulnerable in the society. What does Allah Ta'ala say about the preservation of life? Why life is so sacred? What type of doors it is opening? Teenage pregnancies ever on the increase. 
Children as young as under the age of five have become sexualized. There is this online pornography. We fear the worst if today the mind is open to so many different types of fitan. It was only a few days back there in the house, I mean one of the MPs, Perry, had a meeting with parents. They said the parents zone arranged a meeting with the MP. And what was the discussion about? Discussion was about online pornography and how, what type of impact it is having on the children. That's what the discussion was about. Because there are many parents which are concerned and worried. Can you see how many fit in? We are speaking about many of our parents who are ill-informed and may not be aware that their children are having so many different type of gadgets. We are living in a technology age. Are there guidelines on how to protect ourselves from the ever advancement of technology? So they have the smartphones and the Blackberries and the iPhones. Online, at their hand, access to internet, unlimited access. What do our mothers know? about what is damaging the mind of these children. Because they, they have impressionable minds. See what the research has found. Give a child an iPad and give them to use the internet or get, get, give them to use and start playing games. When they become addicted to it and then you take it away, see how they will behave. Young at the age of five and six and seven. Now they are going to the madrasa. And we are telling them about what is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are speaking about the finality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here the Ahmadi and the Qadiani, they are already dis distributing their leaflets in such great and large numbers. And it is happening all parts, in different parts, there in happening there in London. I am not sure what is happening here in Derby. And while we are having topics and we discuss discussing about how to defend the finality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the same time, there is the worry and the concern. Many, many issues that are being ignored or brushed under the carpet. We need to have guidelines, parental responsibility. It is not only about safeguarding our iman. It is about protecting and safeguarding our children from following their shahwat and their desires. Once they start experimenting, once they start, the society is promoting something like the gay marriages, that it is allowed for a man to get married to the man. And there so many large Muslims. How many million Muslims in the UK? We ask and we question when those MPs went to vote on the 5th of February. How many of the people went and lobbied the MP? When I look here on the list and I see there is one year it says something here in Derby. I find that the MP here in Derby it says Robert Walter. Is it da or is that Dorset not? Anybody knows the name of the MP here? And it says here on the list that the MP voted for the gay rights. So if you can correct me, I am asking the Muslim community and how many Muslims are here here in Derby? How many of you? In Derby or not, it says here Chris Williamson. Anybody heard the name Chris Williamson? Do you know that he has voted for the gay marriages? That is the redefinition of marriage. If we don't do anything, if we don't write letters to them, in 2015, it's going to the third reading. You see, there is how what happens in Parliament. I must explain to you very briefly what will happen. The, it says the, the house of the, the group that came in, I mean, when they, have the, when they want to make legislation, Parliament makes the laws that affect the UK. The government suggests most laws. These are called bills. The House of Commons and the House of Lords look at the bills. Recently, while we were with Malana Suhail uh, there in the House of Lords, and there was the discussion about the halal and haram, uh, you see the horse meat scandal, and then we read about pork DNA found in a halal jail food. Now you have pork DNA found in a halal jail food. Do you know how many of our children in some schools they have been eating haram and it was because of what was discovered there in Ireland and perchance it came to the light and came to the news.
and all started with a horse meat scandal. And then when they started making investigation, you see you had a horse meat scandal, and then you have pork DNA found in halal jail food, and some of the schools already, it had come to the attention that they were being fed haram food. So this is what we are saying, do not ignore your, your right as a citizen in this country. Because when laws have been legislated, we say, the House of Commons and the House of Lords looks at these bills. The House of Commons and the House of Lords would look at any of these bills. The members in both houses, they will talk. They decide which bills they want to make laws. And when the House of Commons and the House of Lords agree, a bill has to be signed by the Queen. A bill then becomes an act of Parliament and it becomes law. But there are committees that may discuss and they will sit and they will scrutinize any of these bills that would may become act of law. And one of them that is now under discussion is, as I explained to you, uh, we say the third reading. If your MP, that is, before it goes into the third reading, we want you to send a letter. I'll leave a sample of this letter here. It has already published in one newspaper. I think, I think I've seen it in the Muslim Weekly. But it simply says, I am writing as one of your constituents to ask you to vote against marriage, the same sex couple, uh, I mean the same sex couple, the bill, because in its third reading in the House of Commons, these MPs are going to vote again. What we want you to do, there are those MPs who voted against the bill. If you send to them that this bill is very and deeply hurtful to the community, it will affect the Muslim and the non-Muslim. It will affect the community at large. will greatly damage children and the vital institution of marriage. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا From amongst his sign, that he has created for you spouses. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that you may find solace, you may find comfort, you may find peace is the one who instills the mawadda and the rahma wa baynakum mawaddata wa rahma if almighty allah ta'ala is saying that this is from amongst the signs and there are so many signs of the creator the moment you remove the true definition of marriage the moment you redefine marriage it's going to have a very serious impact on the education of your child he is going to the state school he will be reading books like king and king or it takes three to tango. And if you read the preview of these books, you will be shocked. What it is actually promoting, there will be many cartoons that they will be watching. It is totally fine for two boys to become friends and to love each another. And it will become, a time will come. I mean, uh, just to give you an idea. If you look at this, where is the outcry? Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. I'll share with you something here. The demise of freedom in the UK today. The demise of freedom in the UK today. And with this, to bring to your attention what has happened and what will happen. It says here, don't let politicians destroy real marriage. Okay? And this publication tells us a gay rhetoric has taken over public discourse to dissent is increasingly suppressed and punished. Society forbids racism and so must silence and if necessary punish this corollary. I mean what we are trying to inform you that it has happened that there was a person in his car they had his leaflet and it was only lying there on the seat and that was in another article and they were approached by a, a police officer and given a warning because this may promote hate. Now we are worried if it has not even become a bill in parliament, it has not even become legal to speak out against this in the time, in the future, you, they can at least maybe abstain from it now. And those who abstain, they can at least vote against it. This is what we need. And do not give up because it's still going to go to the House of Lords. Uh, as was explained to you before. Now this family that I visited, the sister embraced Islam and then there was this youngster and I, he in fact is telling me that there is a very huge and large center there in Southland in Morden and it's very beautiful 
It's so huge because he was thinking that that center is a mosque and a masjid. And this was a Muslim brother. He was not even aware. So can you imagine that there are so many Muslims who do not even know that these masajid, which are not masjid in reality, these temples, these places which the Ahmadiyya are building in different parts in the UK, and those that are frequenting them, and if they themselves are not understanding the difference between the Ahmadiyya and the, the Muslim who believes in the finality of the Prophet وسلم, when we speak about the dissension of Isa السلام, from the signs in the end of times, Isa السلام, yes, he will come. The Ummah is facing such different challenges. Here on the local level, if you only have to look at the newspaper, this is the media challenge. How many of us are actively engaging in their media? We need to educate ourselves. We, uh, and hence, we are grateful for Message TV, for example, to use this important tool of instrument to spread the message and spread the haq and spread the reality. In the recent weeks, we had something about the Boston bombing. And then you had something about Shakir Amir. You have most of the headlines is about Muslim. Then they showed about those youngsters with beards and the rival brother who are planning and plotting to cause some chaos and some bombing here in London. So, highlight in the spotlight is happening on a Muslim. Can you imagine your child and your children that are going to the schools in a day and are going to the madrasa and they are seeing and they are hearing this on the television and they are reading all about the stories of the Muslim. And then they go to the madrasa, another great challenge that we have. One is, there are homes, broken homes. One is, there is an ever alarming increase of divorce in the society. One is, that these smartphones and the iPhones, yes, we can use it to benefit us, but at the same time, we find that it has caused even children to have less communication with their parents. We have found that because of these iPhones, the wife does not even talk to the husband. And every time the phone makes a sound, immediately either the husband or the wife, they are, immediately they are responding to the message. We have become so much addicted. That is the reality. It is affecting our communication. It is affecting our behavior. It is affecting our children. We want our children to have love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now they are going to the madrasa and then we are faced with another challenge. Child has been in a school. He has been so and only maybe two hours there in the madrasa. And can you imagine that child if he has not been given that love at home and therefore he also in the madrasa. He, uh, this was a real experience I had faced when this youngster. He can, in the madrasa he is not learning anything. He is having problem in the school. He is having problem at home. And now he cannot even learn his sabak. He is already 11 years of age. I speak to the boy. I tell him, what is your problem? And then he is not answering me. Then I tell that boy, can you tell me, have you heard of Gangnam? Is it Gangnam? Youngsters may know that on the YouTube is Korean singer. He has different type of dancing. And, and he has changed and now introduced another style. The youngster immediately was excited and he was happy and blushing. And, and then he, he actually done a small mimic of the person. Have you heard of Gangnam style? So this is the Korean, the boy person probably have over a billion followers who is watching and viewing it on the YouTube. So this is what is coming into the minds of the youngsters. So on the one hand we are having large conferences and we want to instill in their minds the importance of the finality of the Prophet wasallam. We want to instill and embed in their hearts love of Rasulullah wasallam. But there, as they are growing up they are facing so much of challenges. So the impact of what is happening around us, what is happening in the media, and how they are feeling about Islam, and when they go to the madrasa, and if the teacher doesn't even understand his background, and maybe he's from a broken home, immediately he's been reprimanded, he's not been spoken to, he's not been given that love, what is going to happen to our children? So as this is a youth conference, Muna Suhail told me to speak on some of the burning issues and challenges of the youth. Is that correct? So these were some of the challenges. I am grateful to all of you. I would like to continue and uh, explain to you some of the other different challenging and issues that we are facing. But uh, if I can just sum it up in a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and just to uh, I mean sum up the whole talk, we did highlight to you the dangers of this new bill that may be introduced into Parliament before the next election. 
and we want do not give up and do not wait do something before it happens and goes into vote in May the third reading uh, I would leave this here with your Imam and and, 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 uh, and inshallah hope copies can be made you can sign it and do send it to your MP inshallah the second is do take uh, note of the halal haram issues if we nourish our children with haram and we take it lightly that will also affect the tarbiyah and the upbringing then we need to continuously remind them of the importance of the finality of the Prophet We need to also introduce this into our children's mind, the importance of love of Masjid Al-Aqsa. On my recent visit to Masjid Al-Aqsa, we've seen thousands and thousands of Muslims denied entry into this place, into this masjid. So we are speaking about love of Rasulullah Very soon people will be speaking about Isra and Mi'raj. The Mufti, when he delivered his last sermon in Masjid Al-Aqsa on the Friday that I was there, what was the 27th of March, and he highlighted that, yes, indeed, the Zionist planning and plotting is to destroy, bring it to its destruction, to rightle the foundations and to build the temple on it. They have a wall there, it's called the Western Wall. They demolished the Masjid, the Barak Masjid. They demolished over 150 homes. They've leveled it to the ground. They are standing right there. You may see the images and the, um, there of the Zionists and the Orthodox Jews who are worshipping and wailing there. What are they wailing for? What are they lamenting? They are waiting for the destruction of Masjid Al-Aqsa. So part of love of Rasulullah is to know that this connection that we have for Masjid Al-Aqsa is not only in the time of Rasulullah is it's right from the time of Adam a.s. 40 years after the Masjid Al-Qa'ba was Masjid Al-Aqsa and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Subhanal lazi asra bi abdihi Layla min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa Glorified be to the one Allah Ta'ala is showing us such a great miracle in a portion of the night from Masjid al-haram to Masjid al-aqsa Al lazi barakna hawlahu and that our entire surrounding precincts have been blessed This includes Syria, this includes Lebanon this includes the land of Palestine which is occupied. 65 years have gone by. And remember, whenever the Muslims have become weak, whenever a people have left the deen and drifted away, Masjid al-Aqsa was taken away from the Ummah. And it is not in the hands of the Muslimin. It is in total control of the Zionists. They can deny you entry right on the gates. And they can deny you entry right on the door of Masjid al-Aqsa. This is what the condition is. So the Masjid Al-Aqsa is in danger. Let's also, inshallah, understand what are the Zionists planning. The tunnels are there. We have seen the excavations. We need to reinforce our love for Masjid Al-Aqsa as the first Qibla, second Masjid, and third most holiest place. And given that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is performing his prayer. No other place in the entire world that he had performed prayer as the Imam of all of the Prophets, Imam al Anbiya. Allah Ta'ala says, Ma kana Muhammadun Aba Ahadim Mir Rijalikum. He is not the father of any one of you men. He is the Rasulullah, he is the Messenger of Allah, and the Khatam and Nabiyeen and the seal of the Prophet. That in itself is very clear in the Kutub that he came as the final messenger. And from there, Allah Ta'ala, when he took Rasulullah Sallallahu up to the seven heavens, he gave him the gift of Salah. So let's part of our engaging with our children. Let's instill love of Salah in their lives. Let's give them the tarbiyah. Let's see what is turning them away from deen. Muru awladakum is salati. Let them, inshallah, from that young age, when they bring the Salah in their life, that will prevent them and safeguard them and protect them when we are living in a society where there is so much of evil being predominant and finally with the dissension of Isa alayhi salam, yes, he will descend in the Umayyad Masjid there in Damascus. See what is happening to the Umayyad Masjid. See what's happening to Syria. That is a serious worry and concern. We are seeing there so many signs, the end of times. So we need to again revisit the discussion on the signs of the hour. What will happen towards the end of time? In one of the times of the dissension, I mean the dissension of Isa alayhi salam. So with all of these topics, we hope and we pray that Almighty Allah Ta'ala can engender in our heart, in our mind, a deep love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And may Allah Ta'ala protect and safeguard our children from the many challenges that we are facing. And may Almighty Allah Ta'ala give our mothers and our fathers the responsibility to uphold and to keep up with the parental responsibility. Aqulu qawli haza astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
मैसेज टीवी दिस इज योर चैनल दिस इज योर चैनल